Well, it's a return, unfortunately, Dave, that uh, the red protocols have stopped us coming down to have, a, have our weekly chat, but we can at least catch up with things that are happening, of course, on, on Zoom, and you can let your supporters know where you're up to. Of course, at the moment, there's a lots and lots of uncertainty of which way the game of football is going to go. Can you bring us up to date where you, you are as a football club? We just want to play football. <laughs> um, yeah, look, we, we've we've been in this situation before in terms of uh, <clears throat> red protocols or, or certainly not green ones. Um, the plays have been great. The, the training ground has gone back to something very similar to what it was the last time we had the, the um, restrictions placed upon us. So we've just slipped back into them ways and we're, we're, we're carrying on as, as we should do and as, we, as we're duty bound to do. But as always, um, with the health of all staff, players, staff, ground staff at the forefront of our minds. So, you know, we, we hope that everyone's safe. We've got lots of, um, you know, um, uh, plans in place, if you like, and, and things in place to stop infection and, and spread of infection. But obviously, if players pick it up in their own families and communities, then there's not a lot we can do. But, you know, the lads are getting changed in four different dressing rooms, for example. Um, you know, they're not allowed to drive in together, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, there's, there's social distancing everywhere. There's one-way systems. So, you know, we're doing is everything we can. Hopefully it'll, it'll not reach our shores, but you, you never know because it's that, that infectious, the disease. So every day we're testing. It's a, it's, a, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a worrying time when you're doing the tests every day. But then if it keeps us all safe, then that's what we've got to do. You mentioned there straight away that you 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 COVID testing it every day. Have you got all good readings at the moment? Are you pretty clear? Uh, yes, we've had our first. Well, we had one in the last three weeks, who's now returned. Returned last week. Um, we had one self isolating because he was a close contact with someone outside of the, the you know non playing staff, um, and we've had two this morning. Um, two academy players have had it this morning or tested positive on the lateral floors this morning so you know they're, they'll do a PCR but I think we're relatively unscathed really at the minute I'm not sure it's reached the sunny shores of crew at the minute and I hope it stays that way Are you a manager and I know it's a delicate situation to to, to talk about and it's, it's an individual decision but are you a manager that's trying to advise all your players to get vaccinated uh, yes and I don't think it's that delicate it's as simple as that I'm right with Jurgen Klopp I think I think anyone who doesn't get vaccinated I understand it I don't think you're morally on the same in the same place as I am you know I went to university and did for what is eight years and I did a lot of things about vaccines and the work and I said to you last week listening to Spotty Johnny who lives in Coventry who's got a million followers on TikTok or whatever it is and, and, and get influenced by people like him rather than people who have devoted their life to infectious disease and making vaccines work you know, I've asked some players if you're an anti-vaxxer, have you heard of Andrew Wakefield, Dr. Andrew Wakefield? I heard of him. You've not done that much research into anti-vaxxing, have you? You know, um, you know. have you heard of SARS? No, I haven't. Well, that's a coronavirus that was around in, when it was 2003 or 2004, whatever it was. You know, you're questioning the players to try to stimulate them to get the jab or the jabs. Don't get me wrong, we've got a very small group that are in that, that place now. So we're not in a or seemingly in as perilous state as some other football clubs. But I'm only going off what you read, you know, through media channels and what have you. Um, and what you hear from other staff members in, you know, on the football grapevine. 
Um, so I don't think we're in as worse position as others. However, anyone who doesn't take the vaccine, I don't, I just don't understand why you wouldn't. One thing I would say, as a member of the PFA, I think their their um, their silence is deafening. They've got a duty to protect their players, all of us. They, I'm pretty certain they would believe that the vaccine is the way forward. I think they should probably say something. I haven't, I haven't received anything personally as a member of the PFA. I know they're in a very sticky situation because I'm pretty certain they think the vaccines are the right thing to do. But they can't, they like us in that sense, they can't force anyone and we wouldn't, I wouldn't force anyone to have a vaccine. But they should, they should, um, they should make their position clear, I think. Okay, Dave, well, as we know, games are at risk. You didn't play at the weekend due to Gillingham having quite a lot of COVID that forced the game off. A lot of games were called off. The FL have opted to keep the season going at the moment. Are they right? Well, I think the question is, is if they stop it, how long do they stop it for? Does that prevent the spread? If it didn't prevent the spread and then they restart the games, would they then have immediately have to stop them again? You know, I, th I don't think there's a... I think you've got to be led by the science. Um, and the, obviously there's a um, an extremely uh, strong case for um, restrictions to be put in place. And we all know that the, the Prime Minister has shot himself, not just in the foot, probably in both feet, with what his actions were last summer. Um, so I'm not sure he can instill any restrictions on anyone. Um, what, what I would say about actually us in this building, we're, we're highly regulated, you know, highly regulated. Um, we, we, we always have been, but we certainly, there's even more um, restrictions on us um, in the workplace. <clears throat> so should football continue? Yes, it should. That's that's my personal belief. Um, should um, should there be protocols in place for fans? Well, yes, there should, and there is vaccine passports. Um, you know the, the COVID passes. How well that is being regulated? Well, personally, I don't know because I haven't attended a game where they've been enforced yet. <clears throat> in in terms of you know over ten thousand people. I went to a game at the weekend. There was, well, there was 2,000 people there, 3,000 people there, all socially distanced. There was actually people inside saying, put your mask on in this area. It seemed very um, well received and, and very well policed. Um, does that limit the spread? Is that enough? I'm not sure. So for me, I think football... Um, Football should be able to continue as long as everyone's sensible and patient and understanding and there's enough protocols in place and guidance and restrictions in place to allow that to be safely executed. So do I think there should be 75,000 inside Old Trafford? Probably not. Could 30,000 go inside Old Trafford? Probably most definitely. And I think that's... I think that might be the case. If it was me, that'd be my, that's only my personal opinion. I haven't heard anything or seen anything. You know, when you get down to our level, can four and a half, five thousand fit into our stadium comfortably, socially distance, I'm pretty certain they could. Um, and I think that's probably how it should, how it should go. Obviously, uh, you know, uh... The fans are going to be the ones that suffer if if it comes behind closed doors, aren't they? Once again, and there's got to be more clarity. There's, oh, there's not, hopefully there's lessons learned from the last time around. Got to be more clarity to where where the fans stand. Yeah, and I think I think that's always I think that's always the bugbear of all fans. I think one of the great things about um, being a crew fan is that we are um, we do provide clarity. However, when there's um, no clarity from outside of us that's placed on us that's very difficult <laughs> to provide the clarity uh, 
so you know we're in the same position as as all the fans on this. We we don't know from day to day. Obviously, the you know the Welsh government has from from Boxing Day's banned. You know, it's not so much a lockdown but a lockout. Um, and there's obviously the Welsh Grand National. I think there's Cardiff versus Ospreys, the, the big Welsh um, rugby game. You know, so there's there's. Is there an argument for that? Should that happen in England? Well, I'm sure there is an argument. Will it come in? Quite possibly, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know the answer because I don't know the numbers and I'm not a scientist. Um, all, I, all I can promise our fans is that I'm you know, fairly certain, as certain as I can be, that as soon as we know more, you know, and how we can go about it and you know, we're jumping the gun slightly, I think, but if there is restrictions, then we'll we'll be as accommodating as we can be within the law. It's as simple as that, and whatever restrictions are placed on us. Yeah, of course, we are waiting on whether the government puts some restrictions or the EFL puts some more restrictions on you. And you just mentioned the Welsh Grand National. I know you're not a betting man, but if you were, were, uh, were a bit of having a wager, what do you think the chances are of you playing Wigan on Boxing Day? I, th- I think we'll play a Wigan. I do. I, 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 <clears throat> I don't see a reason to stop the games going ahead. Um, you know, I, I think I think if you stop the season at this point, I think and it's got nothing to do with our league position, by the way. I think um, you know. I, th- I think it becomes really, really difficult. To, to get everything in place to complete the season on time, you know, because the season has to be complete on time because there's a World Cup next December and you have to start the season at the same, all that. And, you know, it becomes a minefield. Um, I say, so if I was a betting man, I, I, I think my pound would be on the game, certainly going ahead. Financially, it could have a major impact on your level, couldn't it? Your level of football club, if it all gets goes pear shaped it, it has a it has a major impact on every level every level you know the, the Premier League you know sometimes get a, a an unfair rap because they have millions and millions and millions and millions does enough filter down I think everyone is agreement that probably it doesn't and the gap's getting bigger and bigger and bigger um, and maybe they can absorb you know, nine, 10, 20 million pound losses. Whereas any club in League One that has to absorb 20 million pound probably goes out of business. Um, so so the shock is felt with, um, you know, less money coming into the football clubs. You know, and that, what, what I would say about our football club, it's run extremely uh, well. It's run on a sustainable basis. You know, we're one of the few clubs that have never been administration. And there's some that when they chase the, you know, when, when, they, when they chase the, the big prizes and overextend themselves, well, sometimes, you know, they, they, they come a cropper. We don't want to see that. We, you know, I thought, you know, the, I think the EFL and, and Rick Parry in particular gets a huge unfair rap. Not one club went out of business during the pandemic. It doesn't get spoken about enough. I think that's that's because of what the government did, what the EFL lobbied. And I think that, you know, we, everyone was talking about 10, 20 clubs going out of business at the start of the pandemic. And, and not one did. And I think that's, that's credit to all involved, really. Um, so... You know, I think if there was a some sort of short break, I don't think I don't I genuinely don't think there'll be a stop in the games. There might be a short break in terms of fans. Um, but if there is, then football clubs will have to buy one less striker in the January transfer window. Well, fingers crossed that game does go ahead, but of course. So you've touched on it. I suppose your planning and preparation has been altered, you know, because of where you're standing at the moment. 
Yeah, it, it, it got altered last week. It's been altered this week. Um, you know, so you know, that's that's it's part and parcel of the job. You know, the the, the plans. Those last two fixtures have changed on the morning of the game. <laughs> In terms of personnel, it's, it's that's that's the kind of stuff that you know gets thrown up on, on what football does. And you have to just react accordingly and, and and try and find the solutions rather than worry about the problems. Um, and whatever happens over the next three or four days or three or four weeks, we've got to make sure we mitigate any problems that that arise and, and come up with solutions that will hopefully bear fruit in the in the in the short term. You know that, that the problems and COVID presents. Well, as we all know, because we've been at it a long time, Boxing Day is a special day in the world of sport, and more in particular with focusing on what we're interested in, of course, is football. And you've got a, a very good game to look forward to, a bit like your last home game, Sheffield Wednesday, one of the big, big clubs, and a serious promotion contender in Wigan coming to you. Yeah, look, they're, they're, they've done ever so well. It wasn't so long ago that they were in the mire. Um and, and you know, quite right. You know, thankfully they've been brought back from the brink, um, and, and you know, we hope that they they have a long and prosperous, um, you know, journey for their fans. Just we hope it starts. Um, you know, or it doesn't begin until after we've played them on Saturday on Sunday. Sorry. And the one thing that, uh, of course, it will generate will be a great atmosphere and it's a right good opportunity for your team that you send out to show that the, there is that road to recovery on the way. Yeah, look, we, 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 the first thing we want to do is make sure everyone's fit to get on the pitch. That's the first thing. Um, after the last two games, just the, you know, the... the the craziness of the, the Friday sessions before the last two games or the, or the Monday session and the Friday session before the last two games. Um, but anyway, that, that's the first thing. And then, like I said, do ourselves justice. I thought the big moments against Sheffield Wednesday sort of went against us. The, the game before that, Lincoln, I thought the big moments went for us. So we know we're competitive. It's a tough ask. Kenny went to see him on Saturday and said they're a good team. Probably Oxford deserves something from the game. And, and we know that any team at this level can beat anyone. They can. And we've got to make sure that that's, that's the case when, when big clubs like Wigan come into town. Well, let's hope that uh, those crew fans are there on Boxing Day. But if they aren't there, your message from you as the, as the manager of the football club to, to your fans who've been terrific for you this season, which has been dark results at times. But uh, as the manager, your message. First of all, Merry Christmas. You know, I hope you have a. I hope you have one filled, or enjoyed with with special loved ones. Um, I hope you stay safe. And don't take any risks, and I hope that the the the, the festive period sort of passes without any great dramas for anyone. I think we all are craving a uneventful Christmas. I think I think we all want an uneventful Christmas. Um, we don't want anyone getting COVID. We don't want anyone dying. God forbid dying. Um, and, and we want to be able to just be mindful that there's a, a pandemic still going on. Um, but be able to spend some quality time with with close family um, without risking anyone's health. And that's that's the most important thing. So I hope everyone has a an enjoyable as enjoyable as they can. I'm sure it'd be amended. You know, if the Queen's amending their Christmas plans, I'm pretty certain everyone else can. Um, you know, I'm pretty certain she does the right thing. Um, so, you know, I'm pretty certain we can we can all follow her lead and um and have and have a still have a good Christmas. <laughs>